Bruce's hands. Looks like knives. Drop your weapon! I repeat, drop your weapon! Drop your weapon! Drop him! Those aren't weapons! Those are his hands! Please, we know him. These people are coming after Trump. Here we go. Donald Trump, let's read the news, just announced. Here we go. Donald Trump just announced that he has been notified that he's the target of the grand jury investigation in January 6th. Expects to be indicted and arrested. Oh, my. Let, let's read the statement here from Donald Trump. Pop it on screen. Uh, this broke literally moments ago. And then we're going to talk. And then we're going to talk through uh, exactly what the tactic is here by the left. Because this is all a tactic to kick Donald Trump off the ballot based on Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. And we're going to describe to you how and why that would work. Or how that would work. We're not, we're not sure that it will. Statement by Donald Trump, 45th President of the United States. Wow! On Sunday night, I was with my family, having just arrived from Turning Point event in Florida, where I won the straw poll against Republican candidates by 85% with all the polls showing me leading the Republican primary, very substantial numbers, and everyone predicting that I'll be the Republican nominee for president. I'm leading Democrat Joe Biden. Uh, and then horrifying news for our country was given to me by our attorneys, deranged Jack Smith, the prosecutor with Joe Biden's Department of Justice, sent a letter again on Sunday night stating that I am the target of the January 6th grand jury investigation, giving me a very short four days to report to the grand jury almost always means an arrest and indictment. So now Joe Biden's attorney general, Merrick Garland, who I turned down for the United States Supreme Court in retrospect based on his corruption and unethical actions, very wise decision, together with Joe Biden's Department of Justice have eff uh, efficiently, effectively issued a third indictment and arrest of Joe Biden's number one political opponent, who is largely dominating him in the race. Actually, reports out from this morning, polling out from this morning, shows Donald Trump actually opening up a massive lead on Joe Biden in a number of crucial swing states. We're talking four and five points here. Nothing like this has ever happened in our country before, or even close. They legally spied on my campaign, attacked me, totally fake dossier, funded by Hillary Clinton. The Mueller witch hunt, they failed on Russia, Russia, Russia hoax, the 51 intelligence agents fraud, Twitter files, DOJ, Facebook censorship, and every other scam imaginable. But on top of that, they have now effectively indicted me three times with the possibility of a fourth coming in Atlanta where the DOJ are in strict and possibly illegal coordination with the district attorney. The witch hunt is about election interference and completely and total political weaponization of law enforcement. Sad, dark day for our nation. Man, okay, wanted to read you the whole thing. This, again, just broke uh, minutes before we went live on the show. And... We've done our research, ladies and gentlemen. We've done our research. There's a reason why they're trying to do this. And that reason is found inside of the 14th Amendment. I believe we have the 14th Amendment to pop on screen for you here. Let's read from it. Ladies and gentlemen, the 14th Amendment states, and this was, of course, written after the Civil War uh, and adopted, that no person shall be a senator or representative in Congress or elected president or vice president or hold any office, civil, military, under the United States, under any state, who having previously taken an oath as a member of Congress, officer of the United States, member of the state legislature, or exclusive executive officer or judiciary, shall have engaged in insurrection or rebellion against the same or been given aid or comfort to the enemies thereof. Congress has the ability to vote two-thirds to remove this disability. Okay. So this is what they're saying in the post-Civil War era, that if you engage in a rebellion against the United States, you can no longer serve in federal office, any federal office. You are now officially disqualified forever from serving in federal office. This is what this charge is about. It has always been uh, curious to me why they've insisted on the insurrection labeling, okay? The insurrection label is something that was used. It was something that was uh, plucked really out of the nomenclature of a bygone era. Nobody's talked about insurrection. This is a lexicon item from a very distant past. When's the last time you heard the term insurrection in your lifetime? I'm 37 years old. I had never heard it in the lexicon until January 6th. 
And then they started hitting hitting every, hitting the insurre- the insurrection then suddenly became like a a zeitgeist word. Everyone knew its meaning. Insurrection meaning a violent uprising against the authority or government. Insurrection is often armed. Of course, there were no arms. The only arms used in the January 6th insurrection was used against Ashley Babbitt to murder an unarmed woman who was protesting because she did not like the way that the election had gone down. Ladies and gentlemen, this term has been selected specifically for this purpose and this purpose alone to try and get Trump disqualified from ever running for president ever again. That's what the term is for. That's what the insurrection is all about. That's what this insurrection term, this is why they plucked that piece of language directly out of the 14th Amendment and slapped it on January 6th, which January 6th, of course, was not an insurrection, not even by a long shot. It's not a violent uprising. January 6th was a riot on some levels where some hooligans behave like hooligans. They hit cops and they deserve to go to prison for hitting cops. I don't care if you're wearing a red MAGA hat or if you're wearing black block. You go to jail if you hit a police officer. Done. Go to jail. The rest of them were tourists who were generally welcomed into the Capitol by police officers holding the doors open. Now, we've seen that. We've watched that footage time and time and time again. These guys stayed inside of the velvet ropes, but they needed to call it an insurrection. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, if it was an insurrection, you would assume that these people would be burning the building down, would be trying to go after what? Presumably like like the members of Congress or like people who have power. Instead, these people, single file line, wandered through the U.S. Capitol and then left when they were told to go leave. In fact, we have the body cam footage of the famous insurrection moment with Jacob Chansley inside of the well of the United States Capitol. But that's not the only body cam footage we have. This is what is so duplicitous about this particular moment in time and what is so unbelievably dark and depraved. This was a setup, man. This was a setup. They went through and they thought, how do we make sure that Donald Trump don't run again? We had so many, let's call it an, let's call acts of God for lack of a better term. We had so many things hitting at once in this 2020 election, George Floyd, COVID lockdowns, the release of these viruses from China, the neuroticism that we were able to effectively like instill inside of the voters, changing of all the rules of the election, paper, mail-in ballots, changing of the elections, stopping votes at 3 a.m., ballot dumps, no voter ID, they were able to change every single rule. They were able to break every single rule the destruction of free speech and the First Amendment in our country, the Hunter Biden laptop, 51 Intel, they were able to break every rule in the book to shove Joe Biden bag of the old diseased Muppet bones over the finish line, okay? They were able to shove him, drag him, and haul him over the finish line as Joe Biden sat in his basement like a Muppet, that old donkey. And they used every trick in the book and they knew, fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice. Hmm. Oh my, can they fool people twice? If Donald Trump runs again, Donald Trump ended up winning 75 million votes in 2020, legal votes. He ended ended up doing better with black Americans, Hispanic Americans, all Americans increasing effectively his demographic dominance across the entire electorate. Donald Trump at the start of 2020, of course, was unbeatable. They had to, again, reach into their demonic grab bag of tricks and pull out every single 
weapon that they possibly could against this man in order to effectuate the outcome that they wanted. And then they had to do the coup de grace, which is to ensure that he could never run again. And that's what they're doing now. This is it. This is them using the language of the 14th Amendment to try and ensure that Donald Trump can never hold office again. This is going to be the move. This is going to be the move right here. Now, ladies and gentlemen, certainly they could not have ensured that January 6th happened on their timeline so that they could get the visuals, the elements that they were wanting in order to push this insurrection narrative. Because, you know, you can't really argue that there's an insurrection or a rebellion. They never use the term rebellion. They just use insurrection. So you could never argue that without, like, the visuals to prove it. So they had to go get those visuals, baby. They had to get those visuals. We have the body cam footage of cops on January 6th in the crowd encouraging people to go into the Capitol. Now, these are cops acting as federal informants, no doubt, with body camera footage, body cams on. This is how official these cops were. They were wearing body cameras, dressed as Trump supporters, wandering around during this riot encouraging people to trespass into the Capitol. We have them on tape. Go. Drain the swamp. Drain the swamp. Drain the swamp. Go, go. Let's go. Go. Let's... Help them up. Help them up. Help them up. Hold on, wait. Push them up. Push them up. So, what do they get? Well, they get 90 percent of these people on. I don't know the exact number, but there is some something like 90 to 95 percent of people have been charged with trespassing at the United States Capitol. The goal was to get people inside of the building. That was the goal. And we know that we've determined it. We have all of the data and all of the evidence. We can line them all up and we will do that right now for you. Ladies and gentlemen, first off, Nancy Pelosi, who had inexplicably a documentary crew with her that day. Uh, she wouldn't have been too stressed out. Now, Nancy Pelosi, who's in charge of security at the United States Capitol, is the person who's already turned down 20,000 National Guard troops that Donald Trump offered her. The way it works is Donald Trump can offer the National Guard. He can't order the National Guard because Donald Trump, as a president, you're not allowed to deploy troops domestically. So the president has to ask permission of city leaders, has to offer this, and then the city leaders need to say yes. So here, Nancy Pelosi would have to say yes to the National Guard troops. Nancy Pelosi did not say yes to the National Guard troops. And I, I know this because Cash Patel, the person who is the man in charge of the Department of Defense, who authorized 20,000 troops, went on our show. This is from like, this clip's from like years ago, maybe a year ago. The show's changed quite a bit. Listen to Cash say, no, 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 we gave Nancy Pelosi 20,000 National Guard troops and she turned them down. Watch. What the president did was preemptively say, you don't have to come back to me. I have authorized it. If you need up to 20, I think it was up to 10 to 20,000, go. If you need more, you come back. And we went right away to the Capitol Police who reported to Nancy Pelosi and Mayor Bowser since it's D.C. and it's you know not a state. And she she makes the calls there. She put in writing, I don't want any more National Guardsmen and women here. Okay, so they said no. What did Nancy Pelosi say to her little documentary film crew when she had heard that people had gotten into the Capitol? Listen to this. See, Rick Sargis said they have dissuaded him from coming to Capitol Hill. They told him they don't have the resources to protect him here. So at the moment, he is not coming, but that could change. change. Oh, he comes. I'm going to punch him out. This oh, is my mom. I would pay to see that. Waiting for this, for trespassing on the Capitol grounds. I want to punch him out. I'm going to go to jail. And I'm going to be happy. I've been waiting for this. Trespassing on the Capitol grounds. Wait a second. How did Nancy Pelosi know what they were going to charge 97% of J6ers with? Like, virtually no J6ers were charged with insurrection or seditious conspiracy. Those charges are totally under appeal. Some of the people who punched or hit police officers, those people go to jail for that. But 
of J6ers were charged with trespassing. How did Nancy Pelosi know this? How did Nancy Pelosi, while it's happening, while the January 6th riot is ongoing, know that that's what they were going to charge everyone with? Meanwhile, telling the press that it's an insurrection. By the way, does Nancy Pelosi look like this is an insurrection ongoing? Here's Nancy Pelosi walking through the United States Capitol on the morning of January 6th. During the quote unquote insurrection, you can see Nancy Pelosi actually stop on a dime and wait so that the film crew can get the right angles. Look at Nancy Pelosi. There you go. She she waits so that the camera person can get in place. Nancy Pelosi stops and waits so that her daughter, who's filming, can actually get the shot. That's right. Now, what else was being filmed inside of the United States Capitol? We have Jacob Chansley inside of the well of the United States Senate. You can see here that these apparent violent insurrectionists who are, according to media reports, supposed to be taking over all of the government, following the orders dutifully, peacefully, and kindly, following the orders of the police officers who had escorted them down into the Capitol into the Senate well. We've played you this clip before, but it, it's, it, still rema- it still remains an utterly astonishing clip. You can see him with his bison horns on and his Chewbacca man outfit, thanking the police officers, praying for the police officers. Remarkable, truly remarkable, ladies and gentlemen. So there's a man who was in charge of all the there's a man who was in charge of all of the security on January 6th. His name was Stephen Sun. He was the Capitol Police officer, chief, who was in charge. The police chief of the Capitol Police has said on multiple occasions that he begged Nancy Pelosi, begged her to call up the National Guard, to call in more officers. There was a breach point that happened before Donald Trump was even done talking. And the ellipse, that's like two miles away from the Capitol. The breach happened before Donald Trump was finished speaking. They started tearing through the Capitol barricades, which had been weakened purposefully by Nancy Pelosi, by her not accepting the National Guard troops. And then over the course of the next 80 minutes, as the crowd slowly edged towards the Capitol, Stephen Sund kept calling Pelosi and getting nothing, no response. Nancy Pelosi refused to take the call. Watch. Speaker of the House in charge of security at the Capitol. So you have the politically appointed Capitol Police Board that's put uh, in place by uh, the sergeant arms that's put in place by Pelosi. You have the uh, Senate sergeant arms that put in place by the uh, Senate leadership. And then you have the architect of the Capitol that's put in place by the uh, the president. So you have three voting members. I'm a non-voting member. I'm the only non-politically appointed non-voting member. Uh, And that's kind of how the security oversight works. Uh, But it was Paul Irving who immediately said, I'm going to run it up the chain. I'll never forget that. And running up the chain, his chain of command ends at Speaker Pelosi. And I had to wait 71 minutes to finally get an approval at at, uh, 2.09 p.m. before I could finally reach out and start calling in federal assistance. 71 minutes when my men and women fought on the uh, brutally, I mean, fought heroically to prevent the uh, Capitol from being defended, I mean, from being penetrated. And it took 80 minutes before the first window was broken. So those were critical, essential minutes that we're losing. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Sund is saying that the entire process of the riot slowly but surely moving towards the United States Capitol, he kept calling again and again and again Nancy Pelosi's office, and she said nothing. She did not take his call. She only authorized there to be further troops once the Capitol had been broken into. Then let's work our way backwards here. Nancy Pelosi has a film crew with her. Nancy Pelosi said she's been waiting for this, trespassing at the Capitol. Then we get the Tucker revelations that Jacob Chansley was escorted into the well of the United States Senate. Probably because these people are very good. A lot of them come from Hollywood, including the people that put on the January 6th hearings. These are Hollywood producers, and they had central casting calls for Jacob Chansley. They said, that guy, make that guy the face of this, Buffalo Horn guy. They escort him down into the United States Capitol, and it was a setup. It was a setup. 
Stephen Sund went and did an interview with Tucker Carlson. Fox News refused to play the interview. Tucker Carlson went on a show with Russell Brand last week and said, the same guy, the Capitol Police chief, told me that the entire crowd was filled with feds. Watch. And that was a tip off to me. I mean, I had no thought in my head as I watched this happen on television and in the subsequent weeks that U.S. law enforcement or military agencies had anything to do with it. That never crossed my mind. I never thought there was it was a false flag or anything like that. I'm not a conspiracist by temperament. I never thought that. Um, and then I interviewed the chief of the Capitol Police, Stephen Sund, in an interview that was never aired on Fox, by the way. I was fired before it could air. Um, I, I'm going to interview him again. But Stephen Sund was the totally non-political, worked for Nancy Pelosi. I mean, this was not some right-wing activist. He was the chief of the Capitol Police on January 6th. And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That crowd was filled with federal agents. What? Yes. Well, he would know, of course, because he was in charge of security at the site. So the more time has passed, now it's been. So the crowd was filled with federal agents. We have the body cam footage from some of them. We have the body cam footage from some of the cops inside the building. We have the security footage showing cops escorting protesters around by other police officers. And more importantly, we have Clay Higgins' testimony, represented from Louisiana, a man who's been a prosecutor, legal professional, saying that in his viewing of the tapes, the January 6th security tapes, he saw people dressed as MAGA supporters inside the building before the doors were open. Huh? The po they were standing there ready, and the police officers were protecting them. What? Clay Higgins has come on our show and said, the reason you, the most bombshell, January 6th, remember, they're going to prosecute Donald Trump for January 6th. How planned was it? said the most bombshell evidence that you've ever seen is federal agents dressed as MAGA supporters standing inside the Capitol with police protection before the doors were open. Who are these guys? Clay Higgins got a chance to ask Christopher Ray about this. Should be a no. Watch. Does, it, does the FBI have confidential human sources? Um... Did the FBI have confidential human sources embedded within the January 6th protesters on January 6th of 2021? Well, Congressman, as I'm sure you can appreciate, I have to be very careful about what I can say about when. Even are, now, because that's what you I, told us two years finish? ago. May I finish? Uh, about when we do and do not and where we have and have not used confidential human sources. Uh, but to the extent that there's a suggestion, for example, that the FBI's confidential human sources or FBI employees in some way instigated or orchestrated January 6th, that's categorically false. Did you have confidential human sources dressed as Trump supporters inside the Capitol on January the 6th prior to the doors being open? Again, I had to be very careful. It should be a no. Can you not tell the American people no? We did not have confidential human sources dressed as Trump supporters positioned inside the Capitol. Gentlemen's time has expired. You should not read anything into my. They knew what they were doing. They knew what they were doing. This was a setup. The reason why you know it was a setup is that if you reverse engineer this process, and this is a paraphrase from my friend Tim Poole. You all know Tim. But Tim, Tim said this to me, and it's, man, it's, he's so right. You remember when Antifa tore through and was attacking Donald Trump inside of the White House? Now, now that's a real insurrection. They were going after Trump. They were trying to kill Donald Trump, okay? This happened in May of 2020. They were trying to kill Donald Trump. They stormed the White House. They injured hundreds of agents. What if Donald Trump had just lowered the gates? What if Donald Trump had just opened up the doors and let them rampage through the White House and burn things, graffiti the place? What if Donald Trump had been there live tweeting? And it just said, come on in. And then everyone had captured that footage on camera. And they burnt the White House to the ground. First time since the British in the 1800s. War of 1812. The White House is burnt to the ground by leftist activists endorsed by Pelosi and Joe Biden. And then Donald Trump just plays that on loop. Hot He would have won 49 states. He would have won 49 states. It would have been the most effective political iconography 
for Donald Trump to demonstrate what the left is capable of. Instead, what we get is a manufactured agenda against Donald Trump, where they're going to use the 14th Amendment to try and say that he incited an insurrection and that Donald Trump is himself a rebellious figure who's no longer not qualified to run for president. He can no longer run for president. That's what they're going to go after him for. That's what this announcement is, ladies and gentlemen.